Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm down at Randy Marion Ford and I have the keys to the 2022 Ford Explorer Timberline Edition. Huge shout out to them for providing this rugged off-road SUV for me today. Make sure you guys check out their website. All that info is down in the description. The Explorer that you see behind me is finished off in star white metallic with an MSRP just over $48,000. To start off today's review, we're going to take a look at what powers this Ford Explorer. Underneath the hood is the 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder engine paired to the 10 speed automatic transmission. It pumps out 300 horsepower around 5,500 RPM and 310 pound feet of torque around 3,500 RPM. This has the full time four wheel drive system. It weighs in right around 4,300 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in 6.8 seconds up to its top speed of 148 miles an hour. And it has a fuel capacity of 17.9 gallons You'll expect the fuel economy to be 19 miles per gallon in the city and 22 out on the highway. This has a wheelbase of 119.1 inches. Its overall length is 198.8. It has a width of 78.9, a height of 70.2 inches. Its ground clearance measures in at 8.2 inches. And it also has an approach angle of 23 and a half degrees, a breakover angle of 17 degrees, and a departure angle of 23.7 degrees. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this Explorer Timberline, let's start off with the biggest difference between the other models, and that is the orange stripe running right through the middle of the bumper, along with the two orange tow hooks, and then the Timberline logo is nicely stamped on the driver's side there. Everything else is very similar to the other models. The Ford logo is front and center, along with the forward-facing camera, which can provide better visibility, especially if you're taking this off the pavement. There's also plenty of cutouts in that grille to provide cooling to this EcoBoost engine. And then the LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals are on both sides. Nicely flow from the grille all the way around. And you can see the turn signal is on the top section along with the DRL. There are fog lights down in the lower section. There's some more plastic trim surrounding that pinstripe as well as even more cutouts to provide better airflow. And then some clean lines running down the hood. And as we move on to the side, the biggest difference is the height. This is about an inch taller than a standard Ford Explorer. It has 18 inch wheels finished off in black with a nice multi-spoke design and a more rugged off-road tire. So you can tackle the gravel, dirt, any situations like that. There's plastic trim on the fender flares to give it more of a sporty look, as well as running in the lower section of the side skirt. The roof racks are blacked out as well as all the window trim. There's also another Timberline badge just behind the back doors. And then nice lines running in the lower section as well as the height of the door just to give it a really cool design and then finishing up in the back is the body colored spoiler along with some gloss black trim pieces on both sides there is a third brake light right in the middle with the wiper blade in the lower section of the glass to provide better visibility explorer is also stamped into that trim piece just above the backup camera all the parking sensors are nicely integrated in the lower section of the bumper and this has a power lift gate, LED taillights which have a great design and a towing capacity right around 5,300 pounds. So this is a very capable SUV and with the exterior wrapped up, let's work our way to the cargo area. I can use the button that's located on the right side of that trim piece or double tap on the key fob and this is a three row vehicle. So with the third row up, you can tell there's a good amount of space where you can place items that you need. And then up underneath the floor, you can even open this up where there's even more hidden storage as well as two smaller compartments on both sides. So you can put in any items underneath the floor, which is great. And then it's really easy to fold down the third row. You simply just pull this tab, the headrest will fold down as well. And now we have an ample amount of space if you don't need to utilize that third row. So that's great to see. And the second row does fold down too. If you need a little bit extra storage, and so with that wrapped up, up top on the power lift gate, you can close and lock the vehicle or just use the one on the left side to close it. And with the exterior wrapped up, we can move on to the third row seating. In order to get there, we're gonna open up the back doors and take a sneak peek at this door panel. It has really nice leather and even more of that orange stitching to tie in with that exterior trim piece. There's brushed aluminum on the release handle as well as this cool trim piece surrounding one speaker. A little bit of storage is in front of the window control and there's a nice grab handle with more of that trim. Plenty of room in the lower section of the door as well as one speaker. And looking at the second row seats real quick, they have a great two-tone design with the leather stitching and the cloth running down the insert. The easiest way to get into the third row is by pulling this tab right next to the headrest. It will bring the backrest forward and then from there you can push the seat forwards and we have two steps to make it easy to enter into the back. 
And at five foot 10, I have a good amount of space. I'm gonna slide the seat all the way back to where it was. And these seats are adjustable, so you can slide them forwards and backwards, just depending on who's in the third row. And I have around an inch or two above my head. So honestly, this is pretty comfortable and spacious for full-size adults. It's great to see that they are functional like that. There are only two seats back here, but it's still great to see nonetheless. There's a cup holder along with a little bit of storage and some storage pockets down below. Same with over on this side. A little bit of storage up by the window too, and a good amount of visibility out of the back windows for your third row passenger. So they won't feel claustrophobic back here. And then again, the easiest way to get out is to push that and then we can jump out and make our way back to the second row. And with it slid all the way back, it's time to hop into the seat now. This truck is a little bit higher, so you do have to jump a little bit, but the door sill is pretty minimal. And with the front seat set up my height, plenty of room for the second row seating. And I have around four or five inches above my head. And these seats are reclinable, so we can go all the way back. We have the adjustable armrest too. So it's nice that you have captain's chairs for your second row passengers. And then right in the middle is a 12 volt on one side. There's a USB and a USB-C. And then there's two cup holders down at the very bottom. And there's also some storage pockets behind both front seats as well. The air vents are located up in the roof as well as the two in the back. So that way you can get some climates to those back seat passengers. Definitely very spacious for your second and third row passengers. And now before we work our way to the interior, this does have remote start. So all I need to do is lock the vehicle. I'll double tap on this button here and it will automatically start right up which is a great feature. You can have it on and ready to go. If I double tap on that again, we can shut it off for whatever reason. And then obviously you can use the door handle to lock and unlock the vehicle if you need to. And the door panels finish off just like the rear with all the brushed aluminum trim. This even has a six speaker audio sound system. There's all the window controls, the side mirror adjustments, lock and unlock, and a lot more storage in the lower section of the door. You'll see Explorer down on the door sill, and then we have the same seats as the rear, of course, with the Timberline logo embroidered in the leather, which is great touch to see. All the stitching and the insert running down them. And these are automatic seats, so all those adjustments are down on the side. And then working our way into the front seats now, just like getting into the rear, very easy. The door opens very wide, so it makes it much easier to enter and exit. And the steering wheel has a combination of solid and perforated leather with more of that orange stitching running along the inside and more of that brush trim, which matches with the doors. But let's fire this up. With my foot on the brake, that button is over on this right side. We can bring this to life. And looking at this gauge cluster, on the left side is the tack and the engine temperature. On the right side is the miles per hour and the fuel gauge. And right in the middle is an LCD screen where you can go through a lot of information. Using these buttons on the right side of the steering wheel, there's also Bluetooth and voice commands. But using these controls, currently it's showing trip one. We can also go to the tire pressure, monitor the audio, as well as looking at the fuel economy. If I push on menu, it will pull this screen up where you can go into the audio, pull up the navigation when you have that on and running, and enter all that information as well. You can look at your phone when that is paired, your settings, even your display setup. So there's a lot of things that you can go through. And on the select screens, you can basically choose what you'd like to see. So as I showed the fuel economy in trip one, you can also show a calm screen. You can look at your intelligent four wheel drive, all the off-road settings if you'd like to, even your trailer status if you have a trailer hooked up. So now if I go back to that screen, we can pull up the pitch and roll as well as the degrees for the steering wheel. So this is basically your home screen setting. And you also have the miles per hour in the lower section as well as the adaptive cruise so you can monitor that and to control that all of those are over on the left side of the steering wheel where you'll see volume for the radio as well as the steering assist the cruise and adaptive cruise control settings this even has steering wheel mounted paddle shifters which are finished off in black and then working our way to the left side of the steering wheel is all the headlight and fog light adjustments as well as a dimmer switch for the gauges there's even the tailgate release there's one air vent with some really nice trim just underneath that and then as we walk our way to the center, this is the eight inch sync three system. It is a touchscreen system, which makes it very easy to go through. Currently, this is the home screen where you can see the navigation as well as media and phone. And then on the lower section is all of the presets. So you can see audio and phone. If I click on navigation, that will pull it up in full screen. There's also apps to go into and add as needed. And then in the settings, you can go through all this information just to configure it as you'd like to. So it's a pretty simple screen, but it has all the usable information that you need. Just underneath that is a nicely placed tray where you can put your phone or other smaller items. 
and then we have power and volume for the radio tuning on the right side the hazards are in the middle along with some other tuning buttons and there's even a shortcut to the camera system so like I mentioned earlier this has a forward-facing camera the top-down view is on that right side we can even go to the full screen setting and then more of a wide angle so if you're taking this off-road or even in general just pulling into a parking space it provides you with a lot of visibility and then by looking at the rear camera we can put it into reverse and we have the same settings with the full screen and that wide angle there's also a trailer hitch setting so if I push on the plus you have guidelines right in the middle if you're backing up to a trailer just makes it really convenient Going back to the middle here are all of the climate controls nicely laid out. Fan speed is right in the middle. Temperature on each side for driver and passenger are easy to use. There's all the research buttons. There's even a menu button to control so you can go through some more information. And then the heated seats are on both sides as well as the heated steering wheel control. And the background is finished off in gloss black with the brushed aluminum. As we move on to the compartment just underneath that, all I need to do is push on the top. It will open up to reveal a USB, a USB-C. There's even a 12 volt and a good amount of storage for any items that you'd like to hide there. There are two cup holders on the right side, along with a small place you could put your phone, which is great to see. And then coming back to the rotary dial, you already saw me go into reverse. You have neutral and drive, of course, along with the manual setting. So if you push on that, that allows you to use these steering wheel mounted paddle shifters and you can hold the gear that you're in, especially if you're off the pavement, really nice to see. The electronic parking brake and the auto hold assist are just behind that. And then we have a few controls for the driving modes. So by twisting on this dial, right in the center screen, you can go between normal, there's slippery, trail, there's also deep snow and sand, and there's also eco and sport mode. So just depending on how you like to drive this, you can see the background change too, just depending on the mode that you're in. Really cool to see those graphics. There's also a downhill assist control, and by pushing on this button, that is for your traction control. Right in the middle is the armrest with some more stitching. If I open this up, it reveals a good amount of space with this removable tray. There's also a 12 volt if you need to charge electronics and another area right in front where you could place your phone or other items. You could pass the cables through if you wanted to charge it right there. And then over on the glove box, plenty of room for all the information that needs to go there. You can get another look at that trim piece just above the airbag cover. And we'll take one last look at these seats which have a really nice design to them. And up top, there's a sunglass holder, which is really convenient to have, along with the dome lights. So now for the test drive, we're going to start off off the pavement. So we are still in the grass and a little bit of gravel that we'll get to here in just a second. So I'm gonna put the vehicle into a trail mode just for purposes of being off the pavement and letting the four wheel drive system do what it needs to do. Now, obviously you're not doing anything too crazy. This is all flat ground with a little bit of a decline ahead of us but that is what the Timberline model is aimed at. It's for people who wanna take this off the pavement, and by that it could mean going camping, so you're going up some trails, you're going hiking, you're taking this not where it's paved, obviously. So that's just some uneven terrain, depending on where you're going, of course, and that is what Ford is doing with the Timberline edition for this Explorer. From what I read, over the last two or three years, around 56% of Explorer owners are taking them off the pavement. So it's really nice to see Ford answering that demand and making something meant to go off the pavement. And now that we have made it to uh, the roads, we're gonna pop this into sport mode and we'll give it a little bit of gas. Now you're not buying this to be a quick vehicle, but it'll get up and move. And the fact that it can tow around 5,300 pounds makes this a very capable all-around SUV because you can tow with it, you can take it off-road, you can fit the whole family with this being a three-row vehicle. I grew up with a 95 Ford Explorer and it did not have a third row. So they have gotten a little bit bigger over the years. And now switching over to the POV angle, giving it a little bit of gas and using those paddle shifters. They're pretty responsive. So again, if and when you need to use them, they are there. We can quickly put it back into the normal setting. I still have the vehicle in sport mode. Like I mentioned earlier, there's eco and normal. So if you wanna save on some MPG, you can toggle between these modes, just depending on your driving, if you want a little bit more throttle response or not. And so behind the wheel of the Explorer Timberline, you can get a look at the interior. Like I said, a very nice interior. I love all these materials. And as we work our way to a parking lot, we can test just how maneuverable this is by making a quick three-point turn. And we have that camera system too, which you can quickly pull up. And you do have to be going a little bit slower than I am right now. 
So when we push on that, now we can see the forward facing angle so that way you can clearly see what's in front of you. Definitely would be helpful for trail situations and things like that. And then as far as visibility goes, looking over my right shoulder, it's actually pretty far. This is a long vehicle. I can see over my left shoulder, over my right shoulder, there's really no issues. The back cargo window is very large and that pillar is not all that bulky. So I can see around it, use my side mirrors. It feels longer on the inside than it is on the outside. But obviously the more that you drive something, the more you'll get used to it. And so I don't think visibility is an issue at all. And it seems to ride and drive very nice. We're on a, not a smooth, not the smoothest road, but it's absorbing all these bumps well. There's no road noise or wind noise. I did read that with these upgraded tires versus a normal Ford Explorer trim, that they were going to be a little bit louder. Obviously they have some more grip compared to a regular street tire. To me, they seem fine. I have a lifted truck with off-road tires, so I'm kind of used to it, but I really, really don't hear any tire noise which is great, it's not something that you want, especially in a family-oriented SUV like this. So if you want a Ford Explorer, but you want a little bit more out of it, maybe you're going camping, something as I've already mentioned, Ford is basically targeting Subaru with all of their models that are able to go off-road. And like I mentioned earlier, with just over 56% of Explorer owners going off-road, Ford has brought the Timberline so that way they can do it and have a few other settings. We have the full four-wheel drive system so that way that can accommodate to any of the terrain that you're taking your Ford on. But that's going to wrap it up for this walk around review and test drive getting behind the wheel of this 2022 ford explorer timberline once again huge shout out to randy marion ford for providing this suv for me today check out their website that info is down in the description give the video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it and consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads i will see you all in the next video